Okay, so the purpose of this video is to go over uh, how to tune a servo motor um, and do uh, how to basically construct a, a PID loop um, in a servo driver itself. I uh, Generally, drivers uh, they come with uh, software that you can use uh, to uh, analyze responses uh, coming from the remote from the motor and uh, how to simulate the uh, the input signal and all that kind of stuff right I uh, so I was lucky enough that uh, I was involved in a project uh, a while ago in a medical device company where um, basically we had to tune a, 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 a servo motor that was hooked up to a linear platform and I uh, basically what I did was I, I, I went off then I bought I am a similar drive and um, basically I, I, I wanted to learn more about the um, about tuning and so on so like my academic background is that uh, you know I had like say control theory and so on I would have um, I would have done say Laplace transforms I try to assess a uh, response first order and, and, and second order responses and, and, and so on you know so I, I I have a big interest in the area but unfortunately uh, during college I never actually did it you know so I am um, this space this video is just going to cover that right so the um, the the device that I'm using it's from a company called lead shine and they're an American company and they're known for uh, for doing basically cheap drives really you know and uh, this this servo drive it's basically controlled either using uh, RS232 so serial communication or direct input signals themselves right so pulses uh, and waves that will actually go in um, to tell the motor to turn uh, clockwise anti-clockwise and at what rate and so on uh, then we just have a, a connection from the encoder and then actually power out to the motor uh, the motor itself is a brushless TC servo and then it has a, an incremental quadrature encoder attached at the very very end I uh, so yeah then it just literally it's the power supply the circuit is nothing it's just pretty much hooked up uh, to it right so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I'm going to log in to the actual software itself it's called a uh, pro tuner and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, move this motor and what I'm going to do is I'm going to play around with values I uh, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to log in uh, to PC that has this guy connected Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, I'm going to open up the software itself. Uh, the software is called Pro Tuner. Um, select the I just selected the, the ideal drive there. I'm going to open up a connection to my uh, to my serial port. And now, uh, basically, what you can do is you. When you're tuning a servo, you, you tune it with respect to current and you tune it with respect to uh, position as well. But uh, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pay, uh, focus heavily on the actual position. I'll just show very quickly the um, uh, the current tuning with this software. You just basically what, what you have is kind of a, a proportional um, input. So you're you're showing exactly um, how much current is going to spike up uh, to your set point and are you going to let it go beyond the set point uh, or not and definitely what you don't want uh, with a servo is overcurrent or over voltage um, you, you just the drive itself uh, has the ability to protect itself from being burnt out and um, so what you'll end up with is uh, a motor that's spinning trying to accelerate the higher speeds or whatever or get higher torques and then the thing will just cut dead right so you do not want that so what you do is when, when you're going to actually um, see exactly how much current or what the response is going to be 
I am you, you facilitate it with the ProTuner software to do that. So what I'm going to do here now is just run it, and then what I can do is I can go in on the scope and see that it's actually a little bit away, right? So what I can do is I can put um I can I, I can change the proportional value or I can actually change the integral value in itself. So say for example I put in this guy and there we have something that's an awful lot nicer. We don't want it to go over but we want to push up near that line. So the the biggest thing then really to, to focus on with tuning a drive, right? is to, to look at the actual positioning, right? Um, so, you have, right, I'll go over each parameter individually, um, and then what I'll do is, I'll actually move the servo uh, a few times, and then I'll uh, basically explain exactly how I'm tuning the system. Right, so, um, the classic kind of PID for anyone who definitely, hopefully from what I earlier said, that you've, you've You've kind of got a lot of theory and you want to go and put stuff into practice now um you basically have a proportional uh, gain right and you also have integral and derivative gain right so your input continually that's being monitored is your positioning error right so you basically have a command position and then you have your actual position and the difference between them uh, that's the thing that really drives the response of of the system of a servo right so Gain is basically when you're far when your when your position error is big, your gain the magnitude is kind of is brought out right. So your response is going to be kind of drastic uh, if your if your positioning error is is very very big. And then obviously when you start playing around with the gain, you're adjusting the the actual response uh, that the system is is going to have. Is it going to be a a strong response or is it going to be a, um, a light response? So. At the, at the key key element uh, with um, with tuning a servo is that you're focused on two specific things: system response time because you want the time to be very very good generally, right? You want the system to do what you want it to do, and then you want rotor stiffness, right? So you c if you tune a system wrong, basically what you're going to end up with you're going to be in a position where the rotor is vibrating like mad, right? It's vibrating like mad. It's, it 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 continually you're in this situation where you're going to be oscillating and that's just not what you want at all. You want the you want the rotor to turn, get to where it wants to go and you just want it to hold the, the actual position itself. You want settling time to be very, very small and you absolutely don't want an unstable um, situation in itself. So that's what you do. You play around with these guys. The, the proportional value in this respect is the amplifier. So it shows the, the magnitude, it's almost like multiplication. The derivative then it's basically to dull the response. It's it, the higher the value, the more the system is basically you know it's 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 just restricted totally from uh, from having a, a sensitive response. And then the integral term really where that comes into these things is really the end. It's kind of I'm near my set point and now I want to get near it, and it basically fluctuates around the um, around the set point itself. Uh, the pairs part that's just basically it has to do with phases and poles and all that kind of stuff uh, it, this is a brushless TC servo so it's always going to have just two I am um, then the it, where it says say gear numerator denominator that's just uh, situations like where you have a robot and say or, or well any kind of um, any kind of motor where you do have an encoder and if you have a gearbox on the encoder to improve the resolution uh, that is in the situation here the encoder is directly mounted to the rotor, so you know there's no there's no issues there whatsoever. Uh, this encoder line, it's just basically talking about how many pulses are coming out of the encoder. That's basically it. And then this position uh, error limit, it's saying, do you want what do you want out of your encoder? Do you want maximum resolution from what you can get from your encoder? And for most cases, you want to say, yeah, give me as good as I can get. That's what the four thousand is about. And. Um, the next one then, when we're looking at velocity um, trapezoid, right? So trapezoidal motion, uh, you're always looking at uh, basically uh, something like an x-y graph. So velocity is speed, right? So you're going to have ideally with a servo, uh, unless you're you're really looking for a complex motion profile, um, you're going to want a, a steady speed to be held, and then you also want um, the servo to perfectly ramp up, and then you you basically want it then to 
to actually perfectly ramp down. I'm just gonna constant my time, I'm just gonna check it. Actually, I'm just gonna stop this now and then I'm gonna do another video.